Meet Clarence Carnahan, just starting out in life and just in time for some adventure. Well, I was born in Caldwell, Idaho, and it was 1927. My growing up was during the Great Depression years. We had little, but we were like everyone else. I didn't know the difference. We always had enough to eat. We had cows to milk and gardens to hoe and chores to do. When they stacked hay, I drove the horses to pull the dairy cables up. I started that at age 12. So that was a, looking back on it, that was a big part of my learning to be a man. I went to the parochial school. It was small, but about sixth grade, I discovered that I could learn. Before that, I thought I was dull. I remember Pearl Harbor quite distinctly. I was working in a bakery at the time, 14 years old, and Pearl Harbor's been attacked. Where is that? What does that mean? It went on a war footing, rationing. We'd never heard of rationing before, and it changed our lives right away. Father had bought a 38 Plymouth, bare bones type of car, and that served us all through those years. Tires were awful, but when you did get them, they were often made with reclaimed rubber or something. But you could only drive 35 miles an hour and didn't have much gas, so that was part of the war effort. Clarence was still too young to be drafted, and his father's mission in life was that Clarence go to college. But it was up to Clarence what he studied. And I said, well, I think I'll be a physician. I just saw a family doctor around town, looked interesting, and I thought, I can do that. <laughs> I didn't have but the slightest idea what I was getting into. The war was almost three and a half years old when the draft caught up with Clarence, his pre-med studies would have to wait. So I went in April 1945. The war was still on in both theaters. They had finished basic. And we were on our way to Texas. And one of my friends said, well, the war could be over. We just had a giant bomb that we hit Japan with. And uh, it may end the war. So that's all, that's all I knew. The war ended quickly after that, but instead of going home, Clarence was assigned to a hospital ship as an orderly. There were three that were sister ships, the Hope, Mercy, and Comfort, and I got put on the Hope. They put me on a, on a psychiatric unit, and I had no training in that whatsoever. And we had a whole mix of patients all the way from people who had just been nervous to ones that were frankly psychotic. Third trip, the captain said, Carnan, I'm gonna make you sergeant of the guard. Well, what's that? Well, you need to run around the ship and just make sure things are okay and run the chow lines. So I did that, I got another stripe. By the time his service was finished, the hospital ship experience had a positive impact on Clarence. It made me want to get back to school. It probably pushed me on, saying, oh, I can do better than that. Back on course and in school, Clarence also met Barbara, the love of his life. I would met my wife in 47, right after I got out of the Army. We were buddies for three years. We married a month before we went to medical school. And Barbara went to work. She, she was in nursing at the time. She didn't finish. She quit and finished when I interned. She was a real partner. It was a good, very nurturing thing, I think, for both of us. And it was an adventure. Clarence was accepted into the College of Medical Evangelists, later to become the prestigious Loma Linda University School of Medicine. Went to medical school in 1950, graduated in 54. After Clarence's internship and Barbara's nursing graduation, 
Clarence went to rural Missouri and tried his hand at being the country doctor he had envisioned back in high school. He was the only MD in the entire county. We were really doing frontier type of family practice. I did a lot of suturing of wounds and set fractures and delivered babies in the office. <laughs> Barbara helped. It, it was a real adventure. Something that was probably illegal now to do that. Ten years after graduating medical school at Loma Linda, Clarence was recruited to return there and again work in the psychiatric department. I did the psychiatric consultations in the general hospital. At any time someone was threatening suicide, depressed, or they were going to leave against advice or creating any disturbance, well, call Carnahan. So I was all over the hospital. For the next 27 years, the Carnahans made Loma Linda their home and raised their family while Clarence practiced in his chosen field of psychiatry. In 1977, changes in the Loma Linda medical community began to turn Clarence's focus in a new direction, one that would shape the rest of his career. They built a new VA beside us, and so we were mandated to help staff it. I developed a heart for veterans, and I had some very unique experiences there. One is that I was appointed to be the psychiatrist on the prisoner of war team. So I got to see a lot of ex-prisoners of war. I developed deep respect for people who had gone through those horrible experiences. After 27 years, Clarence decided to leave Loma Linda in 1991, Clarence took his heart for veterans to Roseburg, Oregon to work with the VA. He was there until he was ready to retire. I took formal retirement when I was 70, and we moved to Bend. Even though he was supposed to be retired, it didn't quite work out that way. VA didn't have any presence, so I was uh, recruited by Portland to start something. That something is now the VA clinic in Bend, serving all of Central Oregon. During this time, Clarence found himself becoming more and more friends with the veterans he was serving. I hung out with people. I never hung out with patients before. And it had its pluses and minuses, but I think I helped more people by hanging out with them than I did by just formally seeing them in the office. <laughs> I rode motorcycles with this one veteran. We talk on the phone every week now and we have lunch periodically. Others I see less frequently but feel very close to them and a real kinship with them. Clarence continued to work until he finally retired completely in 2011 at 84 years old. Well, 94 now. and I don't know how much longer, but I'll stay involved. Clarence says it's been a very satisfying career. I can say satisfactions at about every step I took. Medical school to internship, psychiatric training, working in the VA. And the last one is the one that's heavy on my mind, and here I am still hanging out with some of them. So very satisfying. In late 2020, Clarence lost his beloved Barbara, but he hopes and plans to see her again soon. I feel more alive spiritually now than ever. Now I have a terminal diagnosis at the present time. Don't know how much time I have, but it's okay. I say this thing may be my ticket home. My earthly prognosis is not so good, but my long-term prognosis is excellent. Whether I'm here or there, I don't It's up to my creator. He'll decide. Here I am with a lot of years, no pain, love all around me, my body working okay, what there's left of it. I'm blessed. If you ask some folks in the veterans community, they might say Clarence Carnahan has blessed them as well.